Guys, I took a ride back over to Quincy today for a quick update. As many of you guys know, this is Doug's home. Uh, Doug <laughs> is the man behind this YouTube channel. Uh, he's been with me for uh, years and years creating a ton of video content. Uh, and he's been renovating his, uh, his own home. Uh, and we've, do, we've been helping as much as we can. But real quickly, I want to thank you know, our partner on this project, GCP. We use the Grace Ice and Water on the entire roof. One of you guys actually uh, reached out to me personally and asked, you know, hey, why are you using the ice and water on the entire roof? Isn't that only used for the edges? And this is a great example as to why we would do that. The roof is older, it's existing. So we wanted really that bomb proof layer on this entire roof. Plus we don't need to worry about a vapor open scenario. Uh, we can kind of seal that entire roof up uh, and then go into the asphalt shingle. And then Doug, on the sidewall, you're using the Vicor product. Yeah, it's a ENVS. ENVS Vicor, uh, and you're using the membrane as well as the tapes. Right. It's, it's cohesive. We're using one brand across all the walls up and over the roof. And then beyond that, you have a one inch rock wall. Right. And that rock wall, that's an exterior insulation that we've installed with a batten, a uh, vertical batten, yep. but that's really to increase our value. It wasn't built or designed to be heated originally, and so a lot of the stud cavities are smaller. Uh, so by adding that one inch of rock wall on the outside, you're adding that kind of blanketed uh, insulation on the outside, and then of course on the inside we'll, we'll do comfort bat in all the stud bays. The outside now looks great. Last time we were here, you were working on the insulation, uh, now we have a pre-finished engineered clapboard siding. You got some white trim. So it's all PVC trim. I just wanted to go with something that's very low maintenance. Mm -hmm. Like it's obviously an upfront cost associated with all of this. Sure. <laughs> but uh, we definitely wanted to go the low maintenance route, you know, durable route. Uh, I know PVC warps and all that. I'm willing to look past that for mm -hmm. the benefits. Uh, the blocks here, we made all the penetrations ahead of time. Um, so that way we could air seal it at the sheathing. So you're coming out with your duct work or your hose yeah. bib and you're using the Vicor tape to air, air seal that. Exactly. Yeah. So this was the um, intake and exhaust for the hot water heater. Mm -hmm. Just pulled it back to the sheathing, used the Vicor tape and then put the Envision over it. Mm -hmm. uh, then put the Rockwell sheathing, I mean the strapping, and then they were good to side. We did that with all the penetrations, just kind of the belt and suspenders. Really giving that air seal them air, as much as air we can water. on yeah. home. Yeah, so the hose is actually not even hooked up, but it kind of gives you a sense of, I just put a, a piece of PVC. Mm -hmm. That way, if this ever goes kaput, the hole isn't dedicated to this, right? That's smart. I, hey, I learned from I learned from the best. I, I don't I don't remember if I've ever done that detail. I uh, I think you did, but I, I, I like I that. definitely didn't come up with that myself. I, you know what? Way. I'll give you credit. I'll give you credit. <laughs> it actually might be Aaron Jones out in uh, Canada. Is he? Well, then he definitely yeah that it big gets, dog. It gets yeah. a lot shout cold out, out there. Shout out to Aaron. So this is th this siding here. Uh, it's all blind fastened, uh, and this is actually installed on our vertical batten. So we have rock wool that was installed first vertical battens and then this siding sits on top of it and spans those vertical battens that's the nice part about doing a clapboard product with an exterior insulation is that you only have one layer of battens which would be vertical because then you get your your rain screen uh, detail when you deal with shingles or where you deal with vertical that's where you start getting into either a continuous uh, sh uh, plywood uh, layer on top of the insulation uh, or a dual layer where you have verticals and horizontals but Doug, I see that you put this big horizontal window in. We had this on site last time we were here. Yep. Uh, and from the outside, it looks killer. Finally it, got it in, it, yeah. We had talked about what it would look like from the outside of the home, but I'm more impressed with it on the inside. So why don't we go inside? Yeah, let's check it out. So I see you got your front deck reframed, which is great. Reframed. Um, and then you get this. I'm assuming that you got this inspiration from Switzerland. Yes, they use that for all their wiring. Everywhere. Yeah, everywhere. <laughs> but you've used this and prepped for all of your exterior penetrations for your future lights, yes. future cameras, yes. doorbell, things like that. Yeah, I just thought same idea with like that hose bib. Like if there's ever an issue, you can pull that wire out. It just it just makes it real simple to fix that. The window was something that we deter we decided on months and months ago that hey, you know, it's a, a smaller space in here. We wanted more light. 
So number one, we increased the front window sizes. We also standardized the size of the windows throughout. And then we had this kitchen here where we were trying to figure out, do we add a window? And essentially we did, and we add this, what we're calling the backsplash window. Yes. Um, yep. And really that was as far as we took this kitchen design. And then you have been working with Clark and Aldine to really help with the interior of this home. My wife and I found Clark and Aldine just on Instagram. We really like their aesthetic. We like their designs. And then we met them at the Contractor Coalition Summit. And I went up to them and I'm like, my wife's a huge fan. And I, for whatever reason, I didn't say I was. And they're like, oh, your wife's a fan? You're just, you're not a fan? And I'm like, no, that's not what I meant. That would be anyway. Mike. That would be Michael. So I reached out to them. It was Michael. Uh, Michael and Danielle. I reached out to them like, hey, is there a way we can remotely design the space? I, I approached them and they're like, yes, absolutely. We can do remote. And, you know, I, I had to provide them with some rent measurements and videos and walk through everything and very simple process. And they kind of just took it and ran with it. Adding a designer to the equation, I think people instantly go to cost. In my mind, like we've come this far and I wanted this to be laid out the best possible way it be could be because it's so small, it's so tight. They laid out this kitchen, it's gonna be a U shape. Okay. This is gonna be counters, counters. And then kind of in line with this, this counter is gonna come out. There'll be stools on this side. Oh, cool. As opposed to an island. Ah. That's what I originally approached them about. And they're like, look, it's going to screw up the flow of the hall. Sure. So you're going to have this U shape that you can kind of work in, yeah. have stools in this backside, and then you'll have a dining area. Dining area, yeah. That has the view of the water. Yeah. And I, d I don't know if it's kind of like built in little benches. I can't remember which side. I think the benches are on this side. Sure. With like storage underneath, we have a one year old, and they're yeah. very conscious of like, hey, you're going to want places to put stuff. and. I can attest to that. Nick understands, <laughs> Paul understands behind the camera. Um, and this is kind of like a living room, um, couch, couched area, chair area with, uh, we're gonna do like a built-in with a TV. Yeah, one of the things I said earlier when I walked in off camera, I was like, oh man, we have this three inch PVC pipe that is impacting, you know, due to the framing. And Doug said, no, we've already thought of that, already designed something from, which, from a millwork perspective that will encapsulate that which is great because you know this is these are the things that you deal with in some of these old homes is you know you have to kind of put the plumbing where you want to put the plumbing right. you're dealing with existing uh, conditions you're dealing with existing structure and yes we could go back and, and reframe certain things and we, we certainly did here but we didn't have the opportunity to put that plumbing anywhere else the other thing I just want to call attention to is that you know yes you're splitting this from kitchen dining to living room but one of the things that we did early on was push the ceiling way up, yeah. um, which captured three skylights, flooding this whole living space with natural light, which has made a huge difference in, in, in just walking into this house. Yeah, and I, it, it just, from you know what it was, you walked it with me at the very beginning. It was dark. It was dark. This, this ceiling is actually lower. It had layers and layers and layers of wallboard. You said something, I don't want to go this far and only go this far. And when we were here last, this bathroom was existing to remain, ETR as yes. the drawing would say, and now it's gone. We were talking about putting tile in here. We've come this far, right? Let's just mm -hmm. got it. Uh, it was going to very much be a room like we'll get to it later. Yeah. Paint it, new vanity, mm -hmm. new toilet, keep the shower, that kind of idea. But we, you know, I, I said we wouldn't do any new ideas, but you know, that went out the window. <laughs> so what, what are you doing from a design perspective that before we get to that, okay. when we opened this wall, we had no real structural issues throughout the whole house. Except for here. Except for this wall. That well, the we, tub was holding this The wall. tub was holding, and yeah. the guy that put that new tub, whichever owner in the past, neglected some issues back here. Sure. Uh, you could see that there were two studs on this wall, and one turned on its side, okay. and that was it. And not much holding that up. So now we're all engines go over here. You can see the wall is nice and it got planed here. So the wall is going to be super flat. The floor is virtually perfect. Yeah, that's one thing I, I'm glad you did is you've actually installed a new subfloor throughout the entire first floor, which makes just a nice quote unquote foundation for everything. Bathroom, looks like we're doing a po pocket door here. So, yeah, pocket uh, door. We have a pocket door on that, on that future bedroom, which is great because yes. of the, you, now you're reducing swing. You have obviously a toilet with your, your, yep. your floor. You have a vanity here. So the vanity is going to kind of come 
through like this. Oh, cool. Stand in shower. Got it. And then the shower wall will kind of be here. And then this will be storage. From this side. So yeah. you'll have your linen storage. Yeah. Are you concerned with having a tub? That's going to be a, that's going to be a tub shower, I believe. You said stand and shower. I, you standing stand. showers upstairs. Got it. My bad. Um, so you'll have a, a standard tub. Yes. And then you'll have your linen closet that ties into the vanity yep. and toilet. Yep. Pretty straightforward in here. Yeah. Then back here, the staircase, you've stiffened up, you've yep. cleaned up. Yep. Uh, but overall, you know, you've left as is. You Got, obviously yeah. do some sort of handrail. And then up here is your primary suite. Yeah, let's jump up there. The thought up here is you've dormered this left side. Yep. You've put these high windows, which essentially will be above a headboard. Uh, you'll be able to tuck a nice size bed in here. King, yep. And then on the opposite side, there's no windows, just a low roof line. And your plan is to essentially bring that wall out kind of to a standing location for a reach-in closet. Yep, yeah. This is where you've added the square footage. So not only do you have a bathroom up here, but you have a laundry room. Correct me if I'm wrong, the only way you were able to fit everything is that Clark and Aldine helped the layout up here. Uh, big time. What you essentially did here is frame as big of a room as you can. Yeah. And then said, I'll figure out the layout later. Basically. This was the, the ski storage, I think, if I remember correctly. Yeah, there were a bunch of old skis up yeah. here. And it was a very scary looking attic yes. in this area. Very first thing, door opening. Mm -hmm. The door is going to open inward. Mm -hmm. uh, it does that because the toilet's right here. So if you walked in and someone's using the toilet, it's kind of like a little privacy barrier. Yeah, um, of course. And like, hey, I'm in here kind of thing. Um, it's going to be my wife in this, and I in this bathroom, so I don't think there's too much concern about we have, privacy. We, have, we, but... under, we understand where, where we're going. <laughs> and then that. it was, it was fi figuring out how to fit a shower. We were going to do a double vanity, couldn't do the double vanity. Not a huge deal. Had to stick with a single. Um, and then washer dryer. One of the concerns we had was, are we able to, are we going to be able to fit everything? Right. And you do. Like yeah. there's actually quite a bit of space in the, in the center of this room. Yeah. And I, I still think we're going to be able to do, if you want to turn around here, Paul, that once this is all sealed up and we have the, the plumbing pe penetrations there, that's why it's wet. Um, I think we're going to be able to maybe, uh, put some like Deep storage oh, cool. under there. Not there because yep. obviously the dryer and all that stuff. But that could be additional linens, that could be bedding. Like, yeah, Christmas decorations. I don't know. Just I, I'm telling you right now, I, the amount of bedding that <laughs> that you end up with, I, I, there should be a whole closet for it. Yeah. You know, towels and extra bedding. It's like, otherwise you don't have a place for it. Yeah, so that, that hopefully will become some deep storage because it's otherwise kind of unutilized. Totally. Um, the big hurdles were how do we lay out the kitchen and the living room? Mm -hmm. Cause what we thought originally was completely backwards. Yeah. And we were like, Hey, we got to do it very like different. This. And once we saw it, it's like, duh, that makes yeah. sense. Like they just, they had it and the same up here. Uh, I think we had it pretty much backwards. Uh, I thought the shower was going to be on this wall. I, I thought it was going to be completely different. And once they showed it to us, it's like, okay, that makes, that makes sense the value in working with someone that is dedicated to design because that's all they do they've seen space they work on space planning they're constantly looking at how to refine space and you have to find the designer that fits for you right yeah. working with them is it's going to pay dividends in the long run mm. right it's there's a cost obviously because they're professionals mm -hmm. let people do what they do right as opposed to me pretending to be interior designer oh i know best like right. i don't yeah <laughs> It's like, listen, I, I know that I can make decisions and, and, and come up and say, yes, I like this versus that, but it's having the information to make that decision with. Right. Where, you know, it, you can, okay, what tile do you want to use on the floor? It's like, well, there's 17,000 tiles being right. produced. And that's another huge job. Yeah. And it's like, Selection. well, yeah. And so it's taking the information from, say, you and Talia yeah. to like understand, like, what's the inspiration behind this home? Where, where, what do you gravitate towards in terms of you know design and aesthetic? Uh, if it's not Drake's house, then we know we're not using crazy marble <laughs> bathtubs right. and things like that. Right. But the the point is is understanding what your aesthetic is and finding alignment with an interior designer. So I think that you know when you think about working with an interior designer and or architect, just a design professional in, in general, you do want them to be aligned. You know do they you know there's the there's two kind of schools of thought you can work with a designer and try to guide them into the aesthetic that you want or you hire a designer that matches that aesthetic 
Uh, and I think that the latter is a better fit in my opinion, because ultimately you're gonna be working with someone that's already on that quote, you know, wavelength, and now you're able to kind of fine tune and micro adjust things to end up with what you really want. Yeah, and it's finding someone who maybe will come out of this bathroom, but finding someone who really fits your personalities too. Like that's a, that's a great point. It's not so much just it's not just about the home. It's also about you as a person. Right. So what other what other things are you guys working on in terms of design and and selections that you're really excited about? Yeah. So I'm really the hold up at this point. We're just naturally the clients always always the hold up. always. So we are going to do tile in the bathrooms. Okay. Tile backsplash. I think we're gonna do a tile entry, maybe a cut brick. Okay. I really like that over at Yeah, thin yeah. thin brick. Maybe, yeah. we'll see. And then in, through here, it is gonna be a, a luxury vinyl. Okay, so LBT. Uh, I was waiting for a sample to share in this video. I did not get it, so we're gonna save that one for next time. Okay. But another selection I'm excited about that they recommended is like a wood up. I love that idea because essentially you have these plaster walls, you have all this simple texture, and then you do have this different plane. But that'll be natural wood. Natural wood, it's, yeah. it, it, it kind of ties into the coastalness of it yeah. um, and, and gives it you know, that additional layer, that, that, that additional texture uh, and also color that can be tied back to say the millwork. Yeah, and millwork, actually I found it through Ken. I believe it's a rehab product, but they cut and edge band their doors in-house yep. and it's very reasonable. Yep. Uh, it's not to the quality standards maybe of a typical NS builder's project, but it's a durable, you know, kind of low maintenance. Um, I've seen some of that stuff, so I might even argue that it's very similar, if not if not equal quality. Yeah, Ken said you probably couldn't get a you couldn't get a custom door that nice any less expensive. I'm super excited to see that the outside of the house is wrapped up. I'm sure your neighbors are as well. Um, but plumbing is signed off. Electrical going to be rolling into next. We'll talk about the future HVAC heat pump installation. Of course, we'll be filling these cavities with some Rockwell Comfort Bat. Yep. Uh, getting into plaster. You've made a lot of progress. There's a lot more to go. <laughs> more. Uh, but it sounds like you've been doing a lot of the work behind the scenes and, and prepping this thing. I would say managing the work. Sometimes I'll step in, but I, I don't want to take any credit away from the trades and sure. you know carpenters who have been amazing work here. So, That's awesome. Yeah. Cool, man. All right. Well, thanks for until next time in. we're in Quincy, we're at the... The uh, Quincy, Quincy Cottage. Quincy Cottage.